first, I was going to say good morning, but it's really good afternoon. I want to thank everybody for always watching our stream. So this is Tom from Tom and Ruth Podcasting. Today we're going to talk about tempo, disagreements, attitudes, how to get past that, and if you can. We're going to talk about why sometimes it's good and why sometimes it's bad. We're going to talk a little bit about this today, and so hopefully you enjoy this. So if you guys have any questions, you can feel free to leave a message here, comment, and or you can comment on our Tom and Ruth Philippine Adventures channel. Today, we're going to talk about a relationship and having a long-distance relationship with your Filipina and or girlfriend. A lot of times what happens with Ruth and I in the beginning, we just started talking and everything was fine. We ended up talking like uh, not necessarily every day in the beginning, but uh, in, eventually after a week or two, we ended up talking every day because our relationship developed to a level that we seemed to get along really well. Our conversation started in a as a 30-minute or 40-minute, ended up being longer and longer because we found that we had many questions for each other. She had questions for me, and I had questions for her. And we often talked about what uh, what we wanted out of life and what we needed out of life. And as you know, things change all the time. At that particular time, I was working a lot, I trying to save money to come here. Uh, I was actually uh, drinking a lot at that time also, and I found myself not really focusing on what was important. Uh, focused a little bit more on aspect of getting the job done and you know, having a couple cold beers, and it ended up affecting me in the point of, like, uh, you know, driving and drinking, and that was a bad thing. But Ruth came into my life and changed a lot of that, honestly. And when I met her, I ended up saying, hey, I'm going to get home and uh, go talk to her a little bit, you know, for 20, 30 minutes. ended up being uh, an hour or two. But what we talked about is the same thing everybody else talks about. What if your Filipina kind of gets mad at you, maybe a statement or sarcasm that you said? You may not have meant it intentionally, but sometimes as a Filipina or girlfriend, they will take things a little bit differently. The thing about the culture is they hold their emotions right on their shirt sleeve. You have to really, really be careful in the beginning because after they understand you, they're going to understand how you are and what kind of jokes you say and what kind of things like that. But as you know, uh, when you first meet someone, you really don't really know them. You don't really know them until you get here and touch them and have a relationship and you're in the same house together talking and doing two different things so but i do want to say in the beginning there was a couple times where i would call her and she didn't answer phone no big deal call her the next day no no answer no answer i said well it seems like that she is not interested or she is not answer phone and i call her more than that you know three or four times and then so i said i realized that i was talking to filipinas before and someone not answer phone but i also I also said to myself, I won't give up. So she ended up calling me. Are you not going to call me? Well, I did call you. Well, do you know that I don't have Internet and signals and things like that? I may not have been able to get your phone. And realizing this now, of course, I know now living here at the time, I thought, well, okay, is she seeing someone else? What's really going on there? Is she talking to someone else? She says she's not. So, but, you know, we got past that. And having that relationship online is difficult. Because you have everything but the touch. You can say all the words that you need to say, but you're not touching them and you're not with them. But say, for instance, you get through all that and you talk to them and you have a great relationship and you find yourself, okay, I'm going to come there or I'm going to bring you there to the States. The most positive thing you could do is come here first, meet your lady, be with the family, find out everything about her and find out all that you can about her because she's going to want to do the same thing to you she's going to know uh were you married before you have any kids what kind of relationship what kind of person you are Are you too controlling are you demanding she's going to want to are you a family man are you a provider number one thing they look for provider family that's it first things comes the first she may not love you but if you can provide for her and her family she will figure out as time goes on a little more deeper, 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 because Filipina are always taking advantage here from an early age. And it's kind of sad. Uh, a lot of them get pregnant a lot at early age. Not saying they all do, of course. Things change. But there's quite a few that you'll find that are 20, 22, 23, 24 that have two, three, four, five kids. And it's just natural. It's just the way it is. And you want to find out a little bit of the truth of that also. 
But once you get here and you are with them and you're involved and you get to meet the families and you get to interact with them and you want to really interact with your 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 girlfriend and or wife, does she speak English? What is the problem? Communication. And you'll understand a little bit more about the culture. Now, what happens a lot of times, too, is you'll find your Filipina may be a little bit on the shy side. She will not talk. She won't go in depth. She's something's bothering her. She may not tell you. She may find you may find her in a corner or somewhere else not speaking. So what you have to do is go find her and ask her, are you okay? And you have to have these things, these serious talks with her in the beginning. Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. But no, no, you're not really okay. I talked to you more when I was in USA than I talk to you now. So what you have to do is figure out what the, what the really the problem is. And sometimes it's communication on your end, communicating with her. You may have been a little harsh and she's not used to it because they are not harsh people. They're a very loving culture. Sure, they will say things that are, you know, uh, if she don't like you, they'll tell you. But really overall, they're, they will keep mouth shut and go on. So you need to find out exactly what kind of uh, relationship I have with her and go in depth. But after you're with her for a period of time, you'll figure out her her glitches or her mannerisms or who she is. And she will do the same because, as you know, us Americans, we have it a certain way and we think it should be that way. But you got to realize you're in a culture. You're in a culture that is completely different from what you were used to before. Sure, you're not going to get that loaf of bread that you used to get. Sure, you're not going to be able to get the pineapple or maybe a cup of coffee that you used to get. And you're not going to be able to find the foods that you used to get. There's going to be many things that you're going to have a hard time yourself, which may filter to your wife if you're not careful. So what you have to do is figure out exactly who you are. Now, if she gets in a situation where there's tempo, if she gets in a situation where there is a problem, and she may not need to confront you. In other words, for an example, and I've told people this, this is one way that you can do. If she is not uh, talking to you, if she's not associating with you, if she's mad at you, some guy, sometimes guys will let it go for an hour or two days or for a period of time and they realize it's getting worse and or uh, well, I'm not marrying this girl, but yet. She's wanting you to come and ask her in depth what's wrong. Now, also, an easy way to do this, if you can't tell me, tell me in text. Tell me like we used to do on the phone. A lot of Filipina will do that because they're so used to talking Facebook, WhatsApp, Viber, you know, uh, whatever that uh, other one online is. There's many of those out there. But she will talk to you and tell you, oh, okay, I have a problem because of you did this. I have a problem because you said this. I have a problem because whatever it is, she has a problem with you. you and a lot of times it's going to be something that you did inadvertently, that you did, you didn't run out aware of it. And she needs to tell you that. And she may not tell you. She may let it go the first one or two times, but it's going to be a point where she's going to have tempo and you're going to have to get it straight with her. Now, Ask her to, if you cannot talk to me and tell me what it is and you're too shy because you don't want confrontation, they hate confrontation, by the way. All Filipino hate confrontation. So you're better off saying, okay, can you text me? Can you tell me what is bothering you? Can you fill me in on what has really got you to that level? And they will text you and they will talk to you. You don't know how many men is contacting me. I can't get my Filipina and find out what the problem is. I said, one easy way, have her text you. Talk to her. You go on one side of the house, have her go on the other and talk back and forth or be in the same room and talk. Let her tell you her feelings and let her tell you. And then once you get grasp on what the problem is, take charge as a man and either apologize and explain to her what you meant by that, where she can understand it. Because remember, they may speak English and they may be OOFW before or someone, but there might be some communication problem, is what I was saying early in the podcast, that you might need to say, okay, maybe I need to do this differently and associate that differently. Now, with Ruth, we started this early on. What I do is I tell her immediately, how are you doing? She said, if she says I'm good, that means she's not good. I know. Ruth. And if I ask her, how are you doing? I'm doing good, good. And as she says, good, good, 
that means she's doing very well, no problems and no issues. But if she says I'm doing good, then I ask her, okay, uh, lay your phone down, lay mine down, let's talk about it. And then she'll explain to me. And a lot of times, I have to tell you, I, I would say 90% of the time, it's me. It's how I approach a situation or something I said that it was, uh, sh- maybe I shouldn't have said it. And it, it was a sarcastic joke or it was a sentence not meant to her or not meant to her family. It's just something that she's not familiar with. And it could be just about anything. Remember, they are used to their side, uh, and we're used to our side. We talk differently. We're more forceful. We're more attentive. Like, what I mean by attentive, we're more aggressive. And we sometimes find ourselves not really sure what the, what the best thing to do, but we know that we should, uh, at least communicate better. And we know this being in relationships before. If you ever had a girlfriend that's Western, you guys will understand communication is the key. So if she will text you and talk to you, that's okay. That's where you'll find your, 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 your lucky day and finding exactly what that is and what that gets transposed onto uh, the situation to solve it. <clears throat> you will find also another way you can do it is have her write it down. If she will write it down in English and or uh, a mediator. Now, this has happened before to a couple of couples. They couldn't get the he could not get her to talk on the on the uh, WhatsApp and things of other night, that nature. But he, I said, you need to find a mediator, her mother, her sister, her brother, somebody that is close to her. You contact them and tell them I have a problem. It's I know it's bringing it open. I saw so I'm sorry for that. But sometimes you have to do this. I mean, you have to, as a man, you got to sometimes be humble. Straight up, just tell the sister, hey, she's mad at me. I don't know why. I need to get to the bottom of it because she's making me more angry and angry and angry, and I don't understand it. So can you help me with this? And sometimes a sister and her brother or mother or father can get to the bottom of it and say, oh, okay, we know what the problem is. Here is the problem. And the guys told me, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Because talking to the sister, brothers, you can tell. And the guy told me the problem was with his Filipina was he was in town and he inadvertently, as us Americans do, said hi to everybody. Uh, hi, how you doing today? You know, walking down the street. And then he was in, uh, they said it was in a restaurant. A waitress came over and hi, how are you? How's your day going? As we always do. And as you know, as American, we do that. Hey, I'm doing good today. Bad day yesterday. It was raining all day and I got soaking wet. And then if the waitress talks back and forth and you have conversation with her, she talks in English. Yeah, I got wet too. I was riding the bike home or whatever, whatever, whatever. And you find there's where it comes into jealousy. And uh, 99.9999% of Filipinos are jealous automatically. So you just have to be aware that she's jealous and be aware. Now, you're going to be the same way when you bring your lady to the U.S. You're going to say to yourself, ah, okay, it's going to be the same way because she's going to be attacked by, I say attacked, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of people wanting to be with her and they're going to want to uh, get to know her because she's beautiful. And, and as you know, a lot of, a lot of Americans like the, the, the Filipina. So you will find yourself that that is another alternative that will help you. You will, you will be glad that you did it long run because you know what? You don't want to, no matter who you get with and who you're going to be with, you're going to have these problems. Now I have many guys saying, I've never had a problem before in my life. I've been married for 20 years and I never had a problem. We just get along fine and no worries. But I guarantee there's some times well, she got angry at him and he got angry at her for some, maybe some of the same things. But inadvertently, this guy was telling me that he was just saying hi to everybody. And even myself, I would say hi to everybody. And I, and I just, my nature. And I realized that uh, in the beginning, maybe I shouldn't do that. Not as if Ruth was getting so angry at me, but Ruth, you could tell that it may have felt her 
felt bad because I wasn't giving her the attention. But as the years gone on, I mean, I have conversations now, and Ruth gets into it, and she understands who I am, that I'm not there searching for anybody else. I want her. I don't want anybody else. I want her in my life, and nothing will change that. So you have to really think about that also. So I, I just want to talk about this because this seems one of the most important topics there is. You know, how much money does it cost to live? What kind of, how worse should I live when I come back? How much is it really going to cost me? How much am I going to expect to pay monthly? And the other questions that happens, always relationships. My wife's not talking to me. I, I She wants me to join a particular church. I have this. And these hard two questions you need to ask her in the beginning before you get six months or eight months into the relationship and you're married or a year. And you find yourself... Well, why didn't you tell me you want me to join this church? I'm not joining that church. I'm this, this. <clears throat> and also another thing, a topic that they don't talk about is children. Yeah, you know, I, I decided I'm going to have a child. Well, she wants a child, guaranteed she wants a child, but you automatically they want a child. And you may find that happens a lot because uh, it's just they want to have a child by you. They want to have a child that that is theirs and you and her together. And it's okay. It's good bonding. And so many people say, well, why would a 70-year-old want to have a child with uh, whatever age? Well, you know what? It's just the way that it's, it is here. They're going to ask you. They're going to want it. They don't care about the age here. It's just the way it is. You have to figure that out for yourself and if it's something that you want to do personally. Not everybody's going to want to do it, but some people do, and it's okay. You're going to have some people say he's dating an 18-year-old here. So what? If a guy's 70, he's dating an 18-year-old, that's his decision. If he wants to date an 18-year-old, he can date anybody he wants. They don't look at, <clears throat> they don't think about, <clears throat> remember, they live for today, excuse me. They live for the day, today, and not tomorrow. So their outlook is living for today. I want to have a child. I don't care how old you are. If you pass or die next year, the year after, year after, I have a child, and it was yours. And that's how they look at things. Whether you're 25 and she's 18, and she's still going to want a child. So you have to really think about that in detail. I sometimes cannot really say all the things that I say on YouTube, as you guys recently know, because I had my podcast taken down off the, off the YouTube because of I mentioned the word and it just ended up being a nightmare. But we sometimes as Americans are sometimes a little forceful and aggressive and we like the things where we are. Uh, sometimes people are more laid back in different parts of the country and they come here and they find themselves laid back, but they're going to find themselves Filipino or as much or more laid back than most of the cultures. And you'll find that there are a lot of them that might get on your nerves at 25 years old, still playing on the phone, set at mom and papa's house. And so, you have to overlook a lot of that stuff. You have to overlook that a lady at 35 and 40 years old, never been married and has whatever children, uh, one, two, three children or more. And by a father or different fathers, you may find she's just trying to survive in life and struggle in life. It's not unheard of for someone to get pregnant at a young age and then uh, the Filipino leave her. Not saying they're bad. It's none of my business. I'm just saying it's like no different it is in any culture. Same in U.S. You guys understand me there. But I did want to talk about this tampo thing. This tampo thing can ruin a lot. So by phone and or text and or WhatsApp, you know, and you don't have to do FaceTime and or Facebook. Talk to her that way. If she can't handwrite it, most times she can handwrite it. If not, get a mediator involved. Get a uh, cousin, brother, sister, mom, and papa. <clears throat> that will help you a lot. And you don't have to tell them the whole story. You just want to say, I want to find out what's wrong with my wife. Before I go any further in this relationship, if we can't resolve this, I need to have it resolved and tell them. Thank you so much for for always watching our videos. And thank you so much for coming on the channel. I will see you guys next time on Tom and Ruth's podcast.